think I would like using Unity and Godot more if I had made those tools myself. Five months later and I'm trying to make those tools. An engine like Godot or Unity is by far the fastest and best way to make a game all on your own. But my goal isn't to speedrun making a game, it's to build a skill set and work on meaningful projects. I've often heard the Cherno's OpenGL series recommended by various people including Randy. But while the Cherno's recent videos are good, his older content doesn't quite make the cut. I've spent lots of time following various different video resources, but I've found that by far the best resource was LearnOpenGL.com. It's a written resource, but it's detailed, has exercises, and unlike the Cherno series, doesn't lock source code behind a paywall. Just by following these tutorials, I was able to implement 3D. And I actually understand it. I learned the basic tools of rotation, translation, and scaling that in theory could allow me to build a complete 3D world of my own. I tested my knowledge by making a level using a boolean array to represent cubes on a grid. And to my surprise it worked. Then once I got Learn OpenGL plus some shader toy tutorials, I unlocked the basic knowledge to write basic custom shaders. With all this newfound knowledge I was confident enough to set off on a mission to make my very own game engine. This engine would be 2D to keep things simple. Basically, I would only need a single sprite renderer and various textures for the graphics of my engine. I could then bind a single quad vertex array object every draw call, and I would just assign a different texture to the quad based on what I'm drawing. I could then scale, rotate, and translate the object by passing in different transformation matrices into the shader. I got to work and was surprised how productive I was. Around this time, I made some changes to my YouTube channel that increased activity and tons of awesome people have been joining my Discord. The amount of people interested in what I was doing and sharing cool projects of their own made a big difference for my morale and helped me stay motivated. The Discord is active and full of interesting and knowledgeable people. I would highly recommend you join. My sprite renderer was finished within the course of three days. I have this awesome system set up inspired by Unity where the user gets to work within these universal and powerful functions to define their own game logic. Most people would use singletons for this kind of stuff, but because I don't care for encapsulation and I want to keep things simple, I just use namespaces for everything. My framework also supports the hex code format, commonly used by palette generating software and image editors, which other frameworks don't support out of the box. In the past, I've been afraid of heap allocation using std vector or stack allocation wherever possible. However, I had to find a way to store pointers to texture objects for my game framework to use. And that's how I finally discovered the new keyword and the power it holds. I knew when I finished sprite rendering, I only had two major features left to add. Those being text rendering and sounds. For this project, I wanted people to use .ttf files for font, because they're commonly used and maintain quality when scaled. The best way of doing this is to use the free type library. However, this library is complex and hurts my brain. But luckily, Learn OpenGL has a tutorial on text rendering with this library. I set out to follow the tutorial and learn the library along the way. But really what I did was replicate the code and abstract it away behind my framework. This implementation isn't ideal because it uses a draw call for every individual character. To fix this, I'll probably use batch rendering, but that's an issue for another day. Next up was sound. By default, I sought out a Learn OpenGL tutorial for sounds as well but the library they used had licensing fees and wasn't free. Plus, I'm about to be in enough legal trouble as it is with me using other people's code and libraries without paying attention to licensing. So I did a bit of research to try and find a similar sound library that I didn't have to pay for. That's when I discovered SoLoud, which was about as simple as I could hope for and is cross-platform. So I did a quick search to find pre-compiled SoLoud binaries and... It turned out I had to find a way to build the library on my own, which I've never done before, by the way. I couldn't just stick with the so loud source code in Visual Studio and build it that way because I needed to use a tool called Genie to generate Visual Studio project files. So I decided to download the Genie exe file which instantaneously closed after running it. But that was okay because I found the build instructions for Genie on the GitHub page and it seemed pretty simple. All I had to do was clone it and run the make command. Bruh. It was about 2am and I was about to give up on so loud and use a more complicated library. When I thought to try something as a last resort, I got the sound working, except the package I found only works for WAV files. So I guess I'll have to fix that later along with the text rendering. But at this point I would take whatever audio I could get, so I finally went to bed. Now that I have sprite rendering, text rendering, and sound, I have a simple to use and mostly feature complete 2D game engine. You can copy paste the pre-existing example implementation into your main.cpp file to get something working. 
From there, you just have to add a little bit of extra code for new assets and drawing. Just like Unity, you write your game logic inside of the start and update methods. My GitHub skills are bad, so I uploaded the source code onto itch.io. To use the framework, you have to download the latest version, set up library, include, and working directories, and paste in the additional dependencies to get started. The best use for a simple framework like this is prototyping. I partly made this to help me with procedural animation. So if you want to know what I use this engine for, watch this video here where I describe my procedural animation methods.